Hello, this is Steve Bostador with BosDeck VNC Scan, and I'm going to show you how to use VNC Scan to set up the new Ultra VNC Secure VNC plugin. For the longest time, we used an old plugin called um, MSRC4 plugin, and things have changed, times have progressed, and you know, and, and here we are. So now we're switching to the new plugin, which is so much easier to use. And you'll see here in a minute, there's no RC4 key to keep track of. It, it's, it's just so much easier to deploy. So I'm starting with a blank PNC scan just to eliminate any kind of confusion of stuff that I might already have cluttering everything up. So I'm going to add a computer that I know exists. It's just a virtual machine sitting behind me. And uh, the IP address is... 192.168.4.33. I almost forgot. Okay, so I'm going to resolve it. And yeah, that's that horrendous name that Microsoft gives all of their computers when they first start up. And I'm going to resolve the MAC address too. It's just good practice to do that. And because I might change the name in the future, I'm going to check this thing to always connect using the IP address instead of the host name. It's just, it's, it's usually a little bit more solid when I do that. And typically that's all you need to set to add a computer, but I'm going to add in some credentials in here too because I'm going to be doing things that I will need to be administrator on. So I'm going to put in what I know to be its administrator password. I'm going to leave it at host here because host basically means you're logging into the remote computer as an account that's on that remote computer, not as an account that's, uh, that's on a domain or, or somewhere else. So that's a good thing to leave. And I'm, I know that typically for, this, for, for all of my network, I use the same VNC password, and I'm going to put that in there too, just so I don't have to keep typing in it every time when I connect to a computer. You'll, I, I can show you in other videos. I'll be doing these weekly. And I, in, in other videos, I'll show you how this authentication works, what the scheme is, and how, how to manage that stuff, because it can get kind of complicated. There's like four different places you can put your password, and they override each other. So here we go. I'm going to hit OK. So now I have a computer in here and I want VNC on it. I'm going to go to VNC deployment and I'm going to go to my profile editor right here. And that brings up the list of if there were profiles, the list of profiles. Since there's not, I'm going to create a new one. And the new one that I'm going to want to create, it's going to be an Ultra VNC. I'm just going to give it an, any old name. Ultra VNC uh, Secure VNC uh, encrypted. There. That, that way I can keep it straight once I get 500 other deployment uh, profiles in here. So I'm going to keep it on Ultra VNC. You can see there's a whole list of different ones on here. Most people stick with Ultra VNC. Not very many people use other kinds, but you know they're there just for compatibility and you know to for the reach, I guess, of everybody else. So there we go. I'm going to put the password in there again. This is the password that I saved in VNC scan. Oh, I can't if I can type it right. Uh, that I saved in VNC scan um, just because that's just what I'm, I'm going to use. That's what I'm going to standardize on. And I click on the Ultra VNC scan or the Ultra VNC settings and I have a couple options. One for MS authentication and one for server uses encryption. So I'm going to check here and now I have to choose a plugin. This is the old one and the default, the only thing there ever was before. Uh, and then this is the new one, the secure VNC. This is the one I want. I'll hit save. And with that being saved, I'm back to this window again with the list. So now you see I have a new one in there and I'm gonna hit close. So now I have a deployment profile and it's ready to go. All right, so okay, here we go. I make sure I select my computer and I go to VNC deployment and I'm going to deploy to the selected. So here shows the IP address because it just shows the IP address here instead of the host name because I chose that in the settings to always connect with the IP address instead of the host name. And, uh, and so my deployment profile is here. It's the only one there right now. Uh, if you had more, they would, you could choose between them. And I'm going to automatically add it to the default group. So here we are. Uh, this right here, the Deploy Ultra VNC dr video driver. You don't really need to do that so much now in Windows 7. Uh, that was more of a Windows XP thing. There's some hooks that they do that make it so much more responsive without the video driver. Uh, you could if you'd like to deploy it, but make sure you don't deploy it to x64 computers because it will fail miserably. <laughs> uh, it's just not fully compatible with Windows 7 x64, uh, the drivers. So they say that Windows 7 x, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Windows Vista x64 drivers uh, do work, but I haven't been able to accomplish that, so I'm not going to put my name on that. 
Up here you have these alternate logons. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that came up. So I'm going to use an alternate logon, and I am going to put in a username, which again I saved you know other places. But here you have to put it in specifically because you never this doesn't know who you're going to try to deploy to. So we'll try administrator. And I'll put in the password that I put in my test machine here. And I'm, again, I'm going to leave it at host because it's a local account on the, the computer. And then I'm going to hit go. All right, so there we go. And a nice looking DOS window uh, will come up for, for and tell us what's going on. I, the machine that I'm deploying to is a little bit slow. It's running on a few different things. I see a subdirectory c slash temp already exists. I get a lot of support requests on that. That's normal. It's fine. That just means that the temp folder where it's trying to write all this temp stuff to is already there, so I don't need to recreate it. So it's, it's kind of just a, it's being a little bit more noisy than it probably should, but it's, it's fine. So here we go. It's going through, it's sending out the files, it's running the installer, and then it's starting the service. And all this stuff, a lot of this is just noise you really don't need to pay attention to unless none of these VNC services start. You see we had a successful one. The when VNC service started. Good. We got VNC on there. So now we just hit an any key and that goes away. Alright, so here we are. Back to the screen. We have our computer. Let's right click it real quick and let's let's check the VNC version. And this is going to go out and hit that file on the remote file system. And it pulls it up, and there it is. It's Ultra VNC 1.099.6. Just as an aside, sometimes this doesn't work if you have a firewall in between you, but typically, if you can successfully deploy VNC to a remote computer, you've got enough rights and enough access to the remote computer for the VNC ver version to typically work. If it doesn't work, certainly put in a, a support request or visit our forums. There's all kinds of people up there just, you know, raring to help. So. Here we go. So now we're at this thing. I'm going to double click on it. And it comes up. And there we go. And you can see that we're connected to this remote computer. And the key to look for is the secure VNC plugin right there in the title window. So that's how to deploy it. And I want to show you one last little thing because it, we do have to troubleshoot this sometimes. So I'm going to right click the computer and I'm going to choose computer properties. Right? And, and I want to show you how VNC scan tells the viewer to use the encryption because there's really kind of a disconnect between the two. The viewer doesn't always know that the other end is encrypted. So when it launches it, we have to keep track of that inside of VNC scan to let it know. And you can see right here the server uses encryption is true. And with that being said, VNC scan knows that anytime you double click on this computer to connect to VNC, make sure you use this plugin. Right, and here's the plugin that it wants to use. You have, again, you have the option between the two. If if your server is configured for a secure VNC plugin and you switch to MSRC4 plugin, there's going to be problems. So make sure you keep match these two up. You'll get error messages, and they they won't be friendly, and, and you'll know that something went sadly wrong. So there you go. We have this, and with this being set, we're good to go, and our we're encrypted, and that's it. And I'll, I'll be doing these every week and each time we'll cover something new. So be sure to take, you know, keep an eye on the YouTube channel, keep an eye on the blog at www.boztech.com slash blog, and uh, you can also go to vncscan.com, and there's all kinds of links there for you too. So, thanks for watching.